Hello everyone, my name is Dromat and today we're going to do, let me just do this, and today we're going to do a Pantheon top or mid, because it works for both guides, uh, a Pantheon gameplay guide in which we're going to go through summoner spells, runes, builds, abilities, combos, lane phase, team fights, and uh, conclusions or end game conclusions or whatever you want to call it basically we're going to go through all of the moments of a game and we're going to also discuss some matchups during this game now i'm not in solo queue i won't play in solo queue to do this kind of guide strictly because um uh, well they invade now strictly because when i'm playing solo queue i have to focus on talking about the guide and that will not work that will definitely not work please don't flash Alright, so uh, whenever you're doing a guide like this, it's much more simpler to play in flex. I'm not, I don't know, this is platinum level or something, platinum diamond. And we could, we could fight. Okay, he flashed. Wow, wow, wow. Okay, we got that. Okay. Well, I'm not sure what was the flash from that guy about, but this just gives me a lot more lane incentive so to say such as a long sword we're going to play pantheon top with ignite and flash summoner spells for top four mid for support are uh, ignite and flash mainly because pantheon cannot be a champion that plays with teleport because he needs the kill pressure now why would you play this on top mainly because it's a good pick into camille and camille is picked so often on top that you hate it it's a good pick against other bruisers uh, it's doable against uh, some wukongs it's doable against some jaxes some shans if you play with ignite you can defeat most of them if they don't play with ignite so uh, that's one reason for you to play pantheon also because he can generally uh, scale nicely if he wins lane he sucks if he doesn't uh, and if he fails his early game so i want you to understand that there are chances for you to actually lose the lane if you're not careful and i am beating this guy up strictly because of itemization advantage okay and now i get this minion and jump on him oh it's fine all right so now i have to word for the hecarim impending hecarim gang because we need to have our e ready and Basically, when you pick Pantheon top, you think, like, can I do this? Can I survive the lane? Can I destroy the lane? If the answer, can I destroy the lane, is yes, then obviously you should pick it. But it can be hard countered, because if the opponent goes something like Lissandra, or if opponent, if the opponent is a very skilled Darius, for example, uh, or if the opponent is um, asking his jungler to camp in your jungler FKs, or if the opponent... There are a lot of ifs. And I can jump here. He's not dumb to jump on me, is he? Dive, 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 dive. Okay, I haven't attacked. <laughs> I haven't attacked. He's so dead. Well, now we're losing it because <laughs> Olaf triggered our aggro. <laughs> it's fine. We got it, we got the kill, so we don't we don't really lose that much. Okay, so uh, basically against matchups like Illoway and Set uh, and Malphite, maybe if the Malphite is good, you're going to basically hate your life. But against most matchups like Bruisers, you should be fine. Against most AP matchups, you should be fine. And when you play Pantheon top, I'd like you to go for either Conqueror or or uh, press the attack, then triumph, legend, alacrity, cup the grace. This can be uh, also tenacity. Uh, biscuit delivery, time warp tonic, and these rune stats. Or you can go for something like resolve with uh, with second wind or that meant plating. Uh, if you uh, need that kind of stuff, but generally I like to go for biscuits. There is also a healing build with uh, ravenous hunter uh, that could work. And you'd like to. You'd like to actually uh, block Camille's hook whenever you're in this matchup. So for the runes, you understand now, she plays so... I'm not sure why she plays like this. Uh, she plays so yolo-ish. 
Now, most Camilles will play like that because this is, like I said, Platinum Diamond ELO, so you should expect similar playstyle, especially if you're not on West. On West, it can be more difficult, obviously, because the players are better. Uh, I'm on Rob Nordic and East right now, so you could focus on that. Um, so, it's fine. For items, I want you to generally start, especially if you play with Time Warp Tonic, even if you don't play with Time Warp Tonic, I want you to focus on the... Uh, on the... Corrupting Potion start, because it's so strong. Okay. Will she eat to me? Okay, I'm staying like this, because... Yeah, nah. Backing off, because there is no Hecarim shown. I can just recall, it's fine, I don't lose anything. When you play with Ignite, you also have to remember the fact that you could just ult back to lane. We're going through abilities in a second. I just want to recall, we're going to items now as well. For itemization, you want to go for Eclipse, Plated Steel Caps, or Magic Resist, depending on needs. If they have a lot of CC, you can go for Magic Resist, but generally armor is best. And then you want to go for something like... Black Cleaver or uh, an over nerf Flavnos Hydra, but I don't like this anymore, so Black Cleaver would be a best option. And then you want to move for something like Sterax, and if you want to go for the full tank shield pad, you want to go for Stone Plate. Remember to buy Vision Words, uh, remember to switch to the Red Trinket if your team does not. So these are just some basic stuff that you could do, and you could just pats like this you could do the full combo and you could slightly back off you don't have any pressure and at level six your passive from ultimate also gets enabled we're going to go through abilities right now and i screwed my cs there okay there is a hecarim in our jungle we could definitely go there he ulted and we killed him because there is not way for Camille to actually reach first. Okay, I cannot lose this one versus one unless she properly ults me. Dodge that, and now just stick here. We're fine. If she comes, we're fine. So uh, we won that very hard, and well, Zoe cannot really do anything to us. So we talked about the build. Let's talk about the spells, the abilities that this champion has and let's just push this in and also I want to emphasize that playing this champion requires also some wave management uh, tactics or skill because on top you're going to need it uh, basically top is the most important lane to know wave management and lane management okay I can sell this and go for some armor some other armor is also useful against most matchups all right so for abilities Pantheon has a passive after using 5 abilities or attacks, Pantheon's empowers next ability, basically when your bar is full something else happens on your Q, W and E. Ultimate is simple, gains passive armor penetration and you jump somewhere on the map. Good to come back to the tower, generally useful to uh, counter engages, uh, well to jump on engages, to do the engages onto next suspecting targets. In teamfights you can ult behind them but you have to remember that if you don't have Sterax or Stoneplate or both, you might get burst down to a CC until you cast this spell and this spell Aegis Assault makes you invulnerable, that's your E. In the past it also blocked tower shots, so it made you invulnerable to that, uh, no longer, so you gotta know that. You're no longer going to block tower shots. If she jumps on me here, I'm going to absolutely dismantle her. She does not. Alright, so E makes you invulnerable, if your E is uh, with a full bar, uh, basically you're going to block for more seconds. You also get movement speed when you cast it, uh, when you stop it actually. And it has two parts, the part where you press E and the part you press E again, the second part deals some damage, uh, some small burst and gives you movement speed, the first part just deals some overtime damage. Basically your W will be your mini stun, your second to max spell and your Q uh, will be your... Um, well, double is point and click, by the way, that's what we remember, that's what we need to know. And your Q is your bread and butter spell. Remember to never ever throw your Q into the lane unless you have to throw by... I, I mean throw by strictly pressing and... Um, you're going to see what I mean. Right. Okay, cast T. Ah! Ignite didn't take... It's fine. Not a problem, because we win bot. And I gave a shot down there, but we tried to block. We could have killed them both if we weren't into the tower. So, your Q is your bread and butter spell. It says here, tap, you deal damage, refund 60% of the ability cooldown. 
if your bar is stacked, fully stacked, then you will deal more damage, which is good as an execute. So whenever you have a full bar, you can do a full Q or you can engage with W because W, when it's fully stacked, is going to do three auto attacks, which is very important. Now, you need to come back to lane most of the time with your ult, but you can also roam bot. But remember, if you roam bot, you're going to lose a lot. Now, she used this and she's going to probably recall so to guess right in this bar. So we can cast ult here, we can got catch her. Okay, she's not here. But we can chase a bit and throw the Q. Okay, she might recall here. Nah, she doesn't. Okay, we can just force push this. Right now, we're going to strictly push and get it into the tower. We might get ganked again, it doesn't matter. So I'm going to make level 9. Basically, your fight skills, your combos will be something like, you have a full bar, good. You're going to W, because that does 3 auto attacks, that procs conqueror or press the attack, whatever rune you chose, instantly. And then you can stack it up, your full Q, and you can get the kill. We see Zoe here. And set. Hey, they int a bit. I see also Ekarim there, which means I have a free lane to do whatever I please here. And... I'm going to look at this. I'm fine on top. I'm watching the map as well. They seem to int a bit. There is also a play that I want. And you should expect the opponents to jump on you. And with E, you should block most of the stuff. So the, the combo part should be something like fully stack W or poke with Qs. And then when you have the bar full, you fully stack it. You deal fully stack W into Q, into instant E if you want to burst. E, instant E, I mean, you press it twice. And that's something that you could do. Look, this is an obvious engage, right? Now, this is how you win trades. She didn't do any damage to me whatsoever. And I can return now onto her. I can just auto attack her to death. Okay. Okay, the full combo, as you've seen, it's in either E first, because you want to block some kind of damage, or W first, because you want to do the three auto attacks in a row from that. There might be a there might be a Hecarim that comes. I'm going to try to bait it out. Nah, it's fine. We're not going to get that. Yeah, we can defer. We can definitely defer. She does have ult. Okay, come, 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 come. Why? Escape, simple, as you can see, so simple. Now, you cannot proc tower shots, as I said with E, in the past you could have, and that made Olaf support, uh, Pantheon support very strong. So again, I hope you understood the combo, fully stacked W, auto attacks Q, whenever you have Q, auto attack, throw the Q only if you need to execute low HP targets, but remember your cooldown will be 8 seconds maximum possible if you throw it. So you just want to generally tap, put it in the ignite, put auto attacks down, and you're going to be just fine. Do not go for something like Gore Drinker, because it's a bait on this champion and it's bad, so focus on playing with Eclipse and focus on not roaming that much early on because if you roam and Camille gets four plates from this tower you're going to automatically hate yourself especially if the opponent scales better so you're going to struggle if the opponent scales better you're going to struggle when you roam but also if you have a Kai'Sa or a Vayne as you can see and you gank and your Kai'Sa or Vayne will outscale their bruiser then it's a good uh, then it's a good thing to do I'm ulting here this is a good engage and I'm getting, I'm not sure what is this guy doing. He instantly proc it again. Good job. You instantly murdered him. And we could go on to that. We're no longer scared of Hecarim because we have our Eclipse. Whenever you get your Eclipse, you'll be fine. Now let's talk a bit about the lane phase. Also, you can practice in the practice tool this kind of combos that we talked about. So you're going to be generally fine. I'm going to work here. I'm pinging that there is a Camille coming and they should be careful. Okay. Let's get this. And I'm going to push top. And this guy is going to get that. Now, 
Onto the lane phase, you want to generally try to get kills, because if you play with Ignite and you don't get kills, you might become useless. That Ignite is useful in teamfights as well for executing the enemy ADC or mid laner. Those are your primary targets in general, and your job in the lane phase is to one, try to kill the opponent, and this guy just tinted. Uh, I could have go there, but I wouldn't have done much. Now, I don't have Ignite yet, but I can just auto-attack this. If Camille also comes, I'm going to be in a bit of a pickle. And Camille definitely will come soon. Oh no, she's bot. Okay, I see set. Got the set, and let's try to get out from here. Uh, that's that didn't feel like it. <laughs> I got the set. I tried to outplay, but he escaped me. It's fine. We got so many kills onto that Hecarim. It's actually painful, but we scale better, so we're going to be fine. Now onto the lane phase. Ignore these parts of Camille will not be more useful than me now, regardless. But I need to follow. Whenever your top laner goes, you could go if you beat him. This this guy is giving up anyway, so it's an auto win. But for the lane phase. You've seen how I played. If you have a favorable matchup, so early on you can it can be a Jax, it can be maybe a Camille, it can be any AP mage, it can be even ADCs. You beat those two, you beat Queens too. It's annoying to play against those, you beat Lucians too. But you gotta be careful, that's all. But uh, you beat Ornits, you beat Maokais, you beat everyone until they stack armor. So early on you have to capitulate on the fact that you are stronger and that, that you also have an ignite. Your job on the lane phase is to not waste ignite without getting a kill. So you should try to keep the flash, keep the Q in order to uh, get the kill. Because the opponent plays generally with teleport, right? And if you use ignite, you're going to make him use his teleport and you're going to most likely lose. I'm coming. Let's get this guy. Why are we backing off? I don't know. Holy man, that Q. Okay, there is also Samira coming in. Okay, we got that. I'm fine. Hecarim minted, so we win this. Okay. Get these guys. Get these guys. And... Ah, uh, hook, 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 hook. You have mana? Alright. Eight kills, that's fine. And that's because we killed mainly Hecarim into that fight. Alright, so I'm going back top. I know there is going to be a Hecarim coming towards me, so I wear this. So basically, on the lane phase, you have two options. If you're against a Malphite, for example, which all he wants is to uh, ult bot at 6, because he probably cannot really kill you on lane, or early at least, then you could force his teleport by igniting him early. But if you are against a Camille and she teleports back and don't have ignite, you're no longer going to beat her. Same goes for Fiora, same goes for Jax, any bruiser. So against tanks, if you don't kill them, you could just probably force stuff out of them, which is a good thing, so like teleport. And if you're against someone who hit ignite, then you gotta just give all the game onto that. Onto the fight, onto the early fight. I think you don't get the kill here. Yeah. There is a bit of inting from my team, but we have a good lane phase and we can just carry it by scaling. At level 11, your ultimate gets 20% armor penetration. At level 16, gets 30%, which is pretty damn good. And I could go here, I could ult. And that guy almost suicided. It's so stupid for an ADC to try to 1 versus 1 the Camille, man. Always. Just like, if Vayne jumped on me, she would probably have no chance of actually doing anything to me. Got it! <laughs> I'm stealing kills. As you can see, I'm throwing that and I'm getting advantage uh, from, well, those spells. Anyway. 
uh, generally on the lane phase, that's your goal. Pantheon is mostly about lane phase. So try to outplay the opponent. If you don't know how to play that specific matchup, Camille will be the most often, then someone will try to counter you with tanks. Ilaoi, Darius, Darius should be banned. Ilaoi should be carefully played around or dodged, but this is so rare. There are also some other matchups which I never see. I'm casting here. That's okay. This guy inted. Okay, I'm backing off slightly. Okay. Okay. Ah! Wanted to flash onto that. <laughs> but it's good for a 1 versus 9 that you did there. We're actually quite strong. If I went for the healing build with Ravenous, and with the uh, and with the taste of blood in Ravenous Hunter as well, uh, I could have probably win that strictly because I out healed the damage from them. But now it has been nerfed a bit, and it's going to be increasingly painful for that build to work. So I see there is 300 gold more. I cannot sell this, uh, man. Stop it! There is a teleport. There is a teleport. There is a teleport. I've seen the teleport. You're going to get ganked. That was a nice Camille. Uh, alt yourself. Good. Gain as much time as you can. We're beating them. We're beating them here. Okay. Go, go, go. Okay, I got the Camille. I got this guy as well. I cannot really get there. Bam. And movement speed. I don't know. I'm not faster than that guy. Yeah. I'm doing fine. 15 kills. Yeah, then again, in higher elos. Matchups on lane will be much harder. So Camilles will know how to not to int you if you are playing in challenger, for example, is going you're still going to beat her one versus one and you shouldn't let her escape you really. So it's all about learning those uh early matchups, early team fights. It's all about that. Because that's where Pantheon shines. And if you fail that, then in team fights you're going to be rather worthless if you don't win early on. And yeah. I can Okay, I shouldn't have done that W there. I missed that also. I inted. I inted, I inted, I inted, I inted, I inted. I was focusing on freaking talking and that's why I cannot properly play this. Now this is a win for us because we have the vein chasing them. Okay, we, we cannot lose this in under any way we, because of that trick. And look at the Olaf, really. Well, I think Olaf will just kill them all. Ah, oh, he has no ult. But Vayne doing Vayne things. Hecarim has no chance. And you cannot really escape either. It's not that... I don't care that much about this. Wow. Strictly because we already won when we got the Drake. We can int like this for 10 more fights. Like random fighting and we're still gonna win. So in team fights, your goals will be to actually ult. If you have Sterax and or Stoneplate, your goal is to ult behind them and try to get them down, try to hit the target that's required. But then again, you gotta learn to replace or to stuff that or to videos that if you do it badly, the enemy will just destroy you without uh, you having time to react. So let's say you're against a Syndra and you ult behind them. Syndra can just instantly stun you. And then you're going to hate your life. And if you don't have Sterax, you're most likely going to die. But then again, if your team follows properly, you're going to be just fine. And we don't have our jungler here. We're gonna win this regardless. Okay. Okay. Bye. Let me stun that. 
by Okay, alt exactly where he will land. Holy moly, that that exact spell, man. That exact. Oh yeah, uh, basically on on your old cast where the sword falls, you're going to you're going to deal some slow and some damage. And uh, as you can see, it slowed him, so it's fine. So in team fights, your goal is dual. Basically, your best team fights will be when you have flash up. And when you have flash up, you could definitely flash on the mid on the ADC and chase the ADC down and run him down, as you've seen that I was doing it. This guy just gives up onto anything. Oops, accidentally turned there. I also keep flash now for Samira, and if Samira comes, I'm not doing anything. I'm keeping my bar fully stacked, so I'm just gonna... Okay, get another kill, and throw a Q, and then I could flash onto the Samira just to prove a point. That keep flash for the ADC, you get the ADC, and you, she's done. Okay. I'm gonna get a full Zoe Q to my face, but if Vayne attacks you here, you're dead. <laughs> so yeah, that's how it goes. Also, yeah, I'm going for a Death Dance instead of Stone Plate. I also like that item as a scalability item. So in team fights, as I said, your goal will be to flash onto the opponent and and destroy their uh, carries, basically the mid, the top. And when you ult behind them, you gotta learn that. You gotta learn how to ult. There's also some tricks that you could do, uh, but uh, mainly, mainly the main trick, the main skill that you need to understand or learn is that you have to flash for their DC. And whenever you have flash, your team fights will be better and more lovely. And so in conclusion, that's your goals to end the game. That's what you wanna do. Uh, this was a bad flash, but we're still getting here the kill. Come on! We got her! There are a lot of intricacies and small things that you need to learn into the lane phase, and that's all you gotta do, really. And if you fail the lane phase, and if you fail the ignite, you're never going to play this champion properly. So watch how the good ones do, and watch how you're not doing, and try to learn from that. Again, Pantheon works on mid as well, there I go with press the attack, and again on mid you are kind of countered by Syndra and Ahri because of their anti your W spells. So there are a lot of small things that you could do, but as you can see, <laughs> Platinum, wow, such an elo. So that's what you gotta learn. Uh, this tutorial wasn't in Grandmaster, and I won't do tutorial in Grandmasters besides Talia because I hate to play those champions there. If I if I focus on two champions, I'm going to play those two champions. And right now I'm playing Talia mid, Talia jungle. That's what I focus on. Those guys will come from Grandmaster. From Flex will be the rest because I don't really want to. I don't want to practice 30 games and maybe lose half of them just to showcase a guide because uh, it takes a while to get in hand on a champion. If you play like 40 different champions at the same time you're never going to really learn one of those properly so you gotta understand that man you gotta focus on a few champs you gotta focus on being an otp up to grandmaster challenger because that's how most otps actually got there so focus on that thing and you're going to carry the game pick your champion pick your poison learn from guides learn to understand how to play every lane every matchup and after you master those learn how to play into the jungle two versus two so, like, for example you play pantheon top with ignite well go help your jungler in the two versus two or play around your jungler or learn when the enemy jungler ganks and don't die to it and those conclusions, those things are going to make you better as a player overall. And after you learn how to play the lane phase, and after you learn how to properly item it, and after you learn how to play the early game with your jungler, then you're gonna move to mid game objectives, or maybe in the lane phase, you're gonna move to the ult bot or ult, ult mid roams part instead of going back to lane with your ult. And there are a lot of small things that you could do like that. And there's also the flash Q trick. So when you expect the enemy to flash, you could Q flash in front in a line and you would get them when they flash as well because they will panic flash and right into your queue there's also that thing that in team fights again you have to play smart you have to jump on the right target so keep your flash for adc mid jump on them do not 
go and focus their tank because that's going to cost your team fight focus in the team fights if you feel like you don't keep up with team fights sometimes i'm tired in team fights i don't do the right thing so jump on the enemy they see jump on the enemy support if he squishy instantly one shot him jump on the enemy mid jump on the squishy targets get them out of the fight block with your east stuff and engage with your ult if it's possible and if it's a uh, five versus three you see three targets somewhere you can alt cast e sterax will proc stone plate will proc you're going to buy a lot of time and this ult can also uh, cover a lot of uh, moments after an objective you could catch escaping targets so they got the objective you catch them and then you get another objective just by iron there are a lot of things you could do so that's the guide guys i really hope you enjoyed it and i will do to Leah guides and those kind of other champion guides and I will be just fine really I'm not ashamed of saying that this is in platinum flex again uh, I'm thinking and I'm sure that most of my viewer base is below diamond so I guess this is how the opponents will react at this level if you want to see grandmaster videos or master or challenger whatever elo I reach then that's going to be on to the Talia mid Talia jungle videos that I generally post so look forward to that and the other guys are probably going to be in flex i'm not ashamed as i said i don't believe i post this just to stomp people this is actually my real elo in flex i just play here to remember how to play some champions to test stuff i don't believe flex is a an indicator of someone's skill i don't think so uh, basically if you're bronze I, I was like gold in flex and grandmaster on solo queue that doesn't mean i'm gold in flex right so anyway that's the game, that's the tutorial, that's how it is. 100% honest and 100% educational, as educational as I can. I went through all of these things in my file that I have. All the questions will be answered in the comments below or on Discord. Join our Discord and see you next time, guys. Goodbye.